What NBA players are you buying stock of before next season? If you look past the ethics of us turning NBA players into stocks, this can be a fun exercise. So just look at it like that. Like if you're building a portfolio that you have to cash out at the end of the 2022, 2023 seasons, what players would you invest in? Like I understand wanting to pick Giannis, Embiid, Jokic, Doncic. These are players that will not burn your portfolio. They are the safe bet. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I ain't that safe around here, you know what I'm saying? So I pick some players that I think have some potential to be volatile in my portfolio, potential to invest heavily into them and it doesn't pan out, but I'm willing to do that. Also, that's how I got to the point where um, when we looking at sports cards, I had like a hundred rookie Sekou Dumbuya cards. I invested in bro thinking he was about to be potentially the next Giannis. He, he's, he's out of the league. So uh, th think about that when I'm predicting my people. I, I ain't shooting 100. I might not even be shooting 50% or, or 30%. This is what I do for a living, you feel me? I ain't perfect at it, but I, I got some names. But I will be honest, part of this video is mostly because I want to talk about one guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's Mr. De'Aaron Fox and I ain't got many Jersey shirts. It's this one and it's Mike Conley It's this one and Mike Conley Those are the two people I decided to go to NBA.com and buy Jersey shirts of De'Aaron Fox and Mike Conley Wow, De'Aaron Fox is number one on my list of players that I want to buy stock in because the Sacramento Kings have got me for the third year in the row. They cannot get away with bamboozling me every single season. But I think this year, well, I think this year's probably the best chances they have to be competent. That's all I'm asking for. I think that's all Kings fans are asking for. Competency, if that's the word, and potentially making a playoff run. And a lot of that revolves around number five. One thing I, I really, really wish um, someone can give me like a, a class in is how to read advanced stats because I got a lot of advanced stats in today's video that sound cool but I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't find a single one of these myself I just know how to scour the internet and, and Twitter so shout out to the people I'll get them I'll get them they love best believe it but no no, no. before we even look at some stats and stuff let's let's take a bigger picture around the Sacramento Kings why I feel like De'Aaron Fox is a guy I want to invest in last season around the deadline they traded Tyrese Halliburton for Demontis Sabonis a trade that so many people looked at including myself were like, what the hell are you doing? But maybe they saw the writing on the wall. Listen, the numbers of De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese together wasn't that great. When, when De'Aaron didn't have the ball, there wasn't much he could really do. And then when he did have the ball, Tyrese Halliburton was kind of sitting there. They saw the writing on the wall. Did they get adequate value for a guy that looks like he's going to be a stud in Tyrese Halliburton? Maybe. They traded him for an all-star caliber player that is just slightly older than Tyrese. I think people think that's a bonus for some reason, like 30 years old. He's not that old. But even now, I still question it, but only time will tell. Tyrese is that nice. I'm going to be honest with you. That's the homie. He is actually that nice. But, but bigger picture, they may have saw the writing on the wall. Maybe there's some things behind the scenes that we don't know as, as NBA fans. And they say, hey, we rather pick De'Aaron over Tyrese to build our franchise around. And since that moment, I think a lot of the moves that they've done are going to improve the chances of building around De'Aaron Fox. Let's break it down. Now, the Fox and the Ox have a very small sample size together. Are they gonna be the next best duo in all of basketball? I don't really know. I, I'm gonna look at the other things, like drafting Keegan Murray. Now, he was uh, the Summer League MVP, and at the end of the day, Summer League doesn't mean that much because I've seen people go to Summer League and dominate and get to the NBA and be like, oh, snap, I forgot how to hoop. But I don't know how likely that is for Keegan Murray. Will he be better than some people drafted after him? I don't really know, but he looks like he is ready to slide into a role right now. And then they made some moves to, to actually have people around De'Aaron Fox that will maximize what De'Aaron Fox likes to do. De'Aaron Fox, I've been a fan of him since he was drafted. I interviewed Bro and I let him know straight up front, he's one of my favorite players in all of basketball. But I think we can all agree that last season was a huge setback, whether it had been his ankle or his shoulder, whatever the injuries were, it was a huge setback to what we were normally seeing. But. I was watching the video by the score, shout out to them. Again, I don't really know how to find advanced stats, but they had some pretty good ones talking about how the lineups that De'Aaron Fox played with last season, nobody on that court can shoot. They were in the seventh percentile when it came to spacing. De'Aaron Fox himself, not a shooter, we know this. He had one year where he shot pretty solid from three, but other than that, it was like 29%, 30%, 32%. He's not a known three-point shooter. He might never be at this point of his career. So because of that, we should probably surround him with people that can open up the game for him because his name is Swiper the Fox. And it's not just because his name is Fox, it's because bro is fast. He can get to the basket at will. If we have people around him that cannot take the burden away from the rim, then what the heck is he doing? Seventh percentile in spacing is insane. 
But if you look at the new lineup, Kevin Herter's on the team, 40% three-point shooter. Keegan Murray's on the team. Don't know what he's going to shoot in the NBA 3, but good three-point shooter. Malik Monk is on the roster, 39% three-point shooter last year. I can't tell you if they're going to defend the goddamn thing, but if we're talking about putting De'Aaron Fox in a position so he can play his best basketball, this is the year. And I also think it's kind of a make-and-break season for De'Aaron Fox because he was given his big old contract. He had a really good season after that. But since then, like I said, down year, kind of plateaued in a way, and this is the best roster he has personally played with. So I'm buying this stock on De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis' is picking roles were ruthlessly efficient last season with a 1.22 points per possession on 14.3 screens per game. This is from NBA underscore university. Shout out to them. Fox's success post-trade may have been more about his epic offensive synergy with DeMontis Sabonis, I, I added that by the way, I added his last name, than about removing Halliburton. And this, asking me what this graph is saying, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I trust it. You feel me? I, I, this is a trustable source when it comes to advanced stats. Best believe it. In the 20 games without Tyrese Halliburton, 24-year-old, something I also forget myself. He's, he's younger than I am. What the heck? 24-year-old De'Aaron Fox averaged 28.3 points per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, and 6.6 .6 assists on 50. Oh, my God. 38 and 75.8 splits. He was out there actually hitting the three. <laughs> Maybe not sustainable because again, it's only a 20 game sample size, but uh, hello? He was a hyper aggressive killer on the rim, even though he was in the zeroth, zeroth, is that even a word? Zero if percentile in rim shot quality. He was going up on heavily contested, smothered layups and finishing through contact. That is crazy. Um, can he lead Sacramento to a playoffs? Uh, only time will tell. But um, I like the graphs and stuff that I'm seeing. I, I, I like our chances. Also, we got the stats here from the score. Again, shout out to them for uh, getting advanced stats for me. We're like with the lineups of the shooters that they have, um, they can be very, very lethal offensively. Fox and the Ox is going to be a real thing. I'm buying in. I'm just going to keep the shirt on because I don't feel like changing. The next person I'm buying in on is a person that is an NBA 75 player. So this is one of the people in my portfolio that's like, oh, is this person low risk considering their history? He's an NBA 75 player. I'm talking about Anthony Davis. Let me stop burying the lead. Anthony Davis, top 75 player of all time, according to his peers and some writers and stuff. Everybody knows how good of a player Anthony Davis is or can be. But I think we can all agree, due to injuries and things like that, this last season wasn't exactly what you wanted from him. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me find out one thing before, before I even speak. Before I even speak, I'm Googling the name Anthony Davis real quick. If this is what I think is true, he not even 30. Oh, give me all the stock. Give me all the stock, bro. If you're selling, I'm buying. I don't know if the Lakers are going to be good. I don't know if they still got tricks up their sleeve or how to make the roster better. But Anthony Davis should be out for vengeance. He should be. I know he was in some, some hot waters after he was streaming GTA and he said he ain't touched the basketball in three months or whatever it was. Actually, I think he was playing basketball against Faye Swag when he said that. Gaming and sports cross ways so many times. It's so great to see. I'm buying all the stock on Anthony Davis. I don't need to go on the full 13 minute thing about AD. You know, if you're a seller, hit me up because I'm buying. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one because um, it has burned potential. And I think the burn potential is mostly due to the fact that he is on a team that has so many guards and he is also a guard that I don't really know exactly if he's going to get the amount of minutes that I think he probably should get. It's a former, another former first overall pick, by the way. It's Markel Fultz. This one a lot less safe than Anthony Davis for sure. Markel Folks, he adds an element to the Orlando Magic that they have they don't have across any of the other guards, and that's why I think his minutes are going to be more consistent than some of the others. Because between Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, are we talking RJ Hampton, Gary Hare, all of the guards, there's one thing that Markel Folks excels at when when the other players on the team don't, and that is pick and roll, pick and roll, and overall just finding his teammates. Markel Folks in the class of his own, at least on his own roster, so that should give him the opportunity to get more minutes. I just, again, want to say shout out to NBA underscore university. Shout out to B-Ball Index because those are the two places that I go to like get a bunch of advanced stats that like I see the tweets and see the posts and I'm like, I did not know that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get a feel for the fact that uh, Trey Young gets a lot of assists and he's a pretty good passer. But Markel Fultz is second on this list. Leaders in high volume assists, 70 pat possessions, assisting resulting in open rim or three or free throws. Markel Fultz is slightly below Trey Young, above Luka, above Darius Garland, above James Harden. What do these people have in common? These are the most elite playmakers in all of basketball. Above LaMelo Ball, above Jokic, Draymond Green, Ricky Rubio, DeJounte Murray. 
Mark Hale is number two on this list. And Mark Hale also doesn't have some of the pieces that these other people have. Mark Hale don't got no Clint Capella. You feel me? Mark Hale don't have no... Okay, Luca didn't have that many great pieces too, but he led them to the conference finals. Luca's a different beast, you feel me? But like his... The, the people that he have on his team aren't known scorers, and he still did it. That, that, a lot has to be said about that. There's another part of Markel Fultz's game that I obviously love and his ability to get to the rim. I don't, I, I can't, see, this is one thing I can't bring you the numbers on, um, but I just know when I watch the Orlando Magic, it feels like it didn't matter who his defender was. If he wanted to get to the basket, he pretty much could. And a lot of that um, ended in him finishing at the rim or him creating an opportunity for someone else to score. So Markel Fultz, I think that the price is probably lower than anybody else on this list. So I'm taking that and, and I'm cashing out. The worst thing about doing a video like this is I know the comments are going to be like, Kenny, what about this guy? And listen, there are a lot of people that you can buy in on. Just let me know who you would. Don't be talking trash about my picks. The next one is a bit weird because uh, the other guys that I've picked have something in common and be at least being a star. Well, is Markel Fultz going to be the star of this team? I think you could probably argue Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony are probably starting in the backcourt over there. But I think Markel will make his way into that lineup eventually. Um, this guy's not a starter big on his own team. Even though I believe he should be, it is Nyeka Okongwu. And this, and this is not a surprise pick if you've been around for some time. You know I love me some Nyeka Okongwu. Before he was even drafted, people were saying he could potentially be the next Bam. And you'll see potential flashes of that. But there's a reason why Bam is one of the better players in all of basketball. And Nyeka Okongwu's not a starter just yet. It's, it's about rounding out the game. We are just going into year number three for him. But I really like a lot of the stuff that I saw. I've, I was waiting for this moment of the offseason where the Atlanta Hawks found a partner for Clint Capella. They haven't. Um, so I guess Nyeka Kongu is going to be either stuck to playing back of five or maybe getting some four minutes. I know they've been talking about him improving his jump shot year after year after year. So like, he's going to obviously need to improve his jump shot in order to play more four. But I really like a lot of the things that I saw and the numbers prove it too. And Nyeka Kongu is kind of a stud. Also, if you know about other advanced stats accounts out there on the Twitterverse or Instagram and stuff, please hit a brother up because I'm always looking to deep dive into other people deep and diving into some advanced stats. You feel me? Trey Young is one of the best pick and roll players in all of basketball. Some people argue the best and I can't even be mad at them for putting that. And you look at some of the pieces that he has and Clint Capella and John Collins, you understand why. Of course, there's a lot of Trey Young, but you also need people on the other end. What if I told you the stats say Yekka Kong was better than both of those dudes in the pick and roll with Trey Young? Trey Young averages greater than, greater than or equal to 1.3 points per possession on ball screens with every partner, but number one on that list is Nyeka Kongwu. Won't you look at that? Now, it's not by a ton. Clint Capella's right behind him, and right behind that is John Collins. But the Nyeka Kongwu, Trey Young thing, has worked. And I think in order to be a great pick and roll partner, you have to have really elite level hands. And I think Nyeka Kongo has that. So many times the pass is not nearly perfect and Nyeka Kongo finds a way to catch it and immediately goes right back up. I really love the stuff I see on the offensive side, but defense is where I'm even more impressed. You don't have to look long to find videos of Nyeka Kongo clamping up some of the best players in basketball. There's one specifically that I watched before recording this video of Nyeka Kongo clamping up Giannis. And before the Giannis fans and the Milwaukee Bucks fans come in the comment section, it's a one game sample, I understand. Giannis might've put up 50 the game after. That's not what I care about. It's about seeing the things. And I saw a lot of the things. Can it be replicated? Against Giannis, probably not often, but if he can use those tactics against some of the other players in the league, boom, we have a great defensive player. He runs like a gazelle in transition. He's great on the offensive glass, and he moves without the ball, something that doesn't really happen in Atlanta often. So to have somebody actually out there moving, whether it be block to block or coming to set the screen or popping out a little bit, I love to see Nyeka Kongo on the floor, and I hope to see him on the floor way more than we did last year. Also, the quality of shot we got from him jumped up a bunch, and it could be a team thing because right above him was Clint Capella, but still, you have to do that from year one and year two. Next couple guys probably don't get their own segments, but Jalen Smith, if you've been around the channel, you know he's one of my favorite prospects in his draft class. And to see him get re-signed and in their interview, they're saying he's competing to be the starting power forward over in Indy. I'm really excited about that. Pressure Tuya is another one. As you can tell, I have a type kind of. If you can play some defense, run the floor, and do a little bit of extra stuff, I'm a big fan. Like Jalen Smith and Pressure show that they could potentially become plus three-point shooters. And I love that idea. So yes, they're on my list. Uh, earlier in last season, we were making jokes about the fact that Pressure was shooting like 30% from the field as a center. A lot of that changed throughout the course of the season, and there were times in the playoffs where he seemed like one of the better players on the floor, and he is also super young. So those are those are some of my people. Um, 
I'm, I'm gonna go to the comment section because I also did tweet this because I was curious to what y'all were thinking. Shake it, shake it. This is my Twitter, by the way. So if you're interested, go follow me. Uh, let's see. Ben Simmons is looking hella attractive right now. I'm assuming he's talking about the basketball play, but even if he's not, that's fine. Um, yes, I mean, we talk about a person whose stock is at an all-time low. I would buy that as well, but we already know Ben Simmons. We, we've seen him play so much that I, it's not a person to add to my personal list, but I would buy in. Wendell Carter Jr., love that. AD stock is at an all-time low right now. I, I love that big man, I agree. John Wall, go and Yekka Kongo, one of my guys. David Duke Jr. and Klax. Ooh, I see a couple RJs back to back. RJ stock has already been bought. I believe having a point guard maximize Mitchell Robinson's ability that has been suppressed. Expect him to be in the same tier as Jarrett Allen and Robert Williams next season. So he's talking more about Mitchell Robinson than RJ. That's um, that's interesting. Only time will tell. Playoff bound. Also a big Knicks fan, so I understand having high hopes for your team. I hope you're. I hope you're right. Another one. I also a guy named Kenny. RJ. Kelton Johnson's a very good pick, as you can see here. Saw it a lot. Um, it makes sense, you know, DeJounte Murray is gone and he averaged 17 last year. With DeJounte, there's going to be more shots. But I also think that his stock is high right now because of that exact fact. I think a lot of people realize that he's going to be in conversation with most improved player. So I'm not saying it's a bad buy, obviously, because he can hoop. But you might not be getting as much value as you think because a lot of people expect him to be a lot better. I guess you could say that about a lot of my picks as well. All right, I, I appreciate everybody that participated. Um, this style of video is cool. I recorded another video like this, but like way more in depth. Um, a little while ago and my editor is dealing with that one. I'm dealing with this one so it's not going to be as good but I, since it's the off season, bro, I'm just throwing things at the wall, whatever. I think it's fun and this has been fun for me just standing up talking hoops. I, I, I guess I'll see y'all soon but maybe not. I, whatever.